beautiful people. I'm Danny, And I'm Britt. And this is the Gay Cousin Club Podcast. I made myself a Paloma, but this time I kind of didn't measure. And I was like, I really don't enjoy the taste of tequila. So I'm going to like make sure that I put extra shit in so that I don't taste the tequila. I put way too much lime juice in. So now when I drink it, watch what my face does. I, I saw what your face was doing. It's like, I can't even control it. Don't mean for that. I, I really enjoy tequila. I just, since I did that fucking bender in college, I like, yeah. Oh, child, I did so many benders. I still love it. <laughs> but I'm drinking um a, a watermelon wine. It's obviously my partner's and not mine because I do not drink sweet wine. And it is literally like say a it. liquefied watermelon Jolly Rancher, which sounds delightful. It is so sickly sweet. It like makes my teeth hurt. <laughs> It does not. I feel like that would only be good if I had like a seltzer water to put with it. Maybe. Like, I don't know. It's too much for me. Is it out so it at least feels like a Smirnoff ice? Oh, that sounds terrible. Well, so does your drink. <laughs> but at least then you'd burp. Yeah. Can I tell you, I actually have news yeah. for usually this is like 10 minutes of Danny time. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean, this is like the time I get to catch up on your life. Um, I have news yeah. to share. Okay. So I started seriously researching um, a master's program. Really? I started seriously researching a bunch of master's programs, to be more specific. Um, That's so cool. Yeah. Well, when I was a teacher, I always wanted to pursue um, a master's in education. And okay. I did not because I was not in a financial position. But I was going to hospital because you're barely paying a living wage. And there wasn't any kind oh, yeah. of like tuition reimbursement. But my current employer does offer um, somewhat of a tuition reimbursement plan, which is nice. I haven't been there oh, long cool. to, I haven't been there long enough to qualify for it yet, but I'm just looking ahead to the future. So I've been researching some like in-state and out-of-state programs. And I found one. I found a couple that I'm interested in. And I found one that I'm really excited about because it's like um gonna be fully online soon, where it nice. like it has been um a hybrid situation, which as somebody who has a full-time job and a partner with a schedule that changes every week and two kids with different schedules. Yes. It's just not going to work. Hybrid's fucking hard. Hybrid yeah, is I'm hard. Not. Which, like, I I'm, I would like to be in a classroom. I love, like, being in a classroom and actually being able to collaborate with people, but it's just not realistic for my life right now. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's a program in... I won't, like, get into too much specifics with it, but um, a master's in education and in leadership and... There's a strong focus on social justice, which I'm really excited about. Yes. Um, I'm very excited. I did not think that that was something that was going to be an opportunity for me in the near future. But with one kid starting kindergarten next week and daycare costs going down, we're thinking like ideally next fall would be a realistic time. Really? But if not next fall, probably the year after. So I mean, I'm not going to lie. That makes me a little I'm nervous for the podcast in a selfish way. But oh, mostly, yeah, the podcast you. that we're spending money on and not making money okay. from. Yes, my professional development, my bucket list dreams. That's I'll put that to the side for the podcast. <laughs> that's so not making us any money. Fuck you. Thank sure. Thank <laughs> Diddy. No, I, fuck <laughs> literally, we barely get the podcast done just because we're tired. Not yeah. like because we're like, oh, my tummy hurts today because I had too much cheese. Real story. I have definitely canceled because yeah. of that. No, I'm. I was being a shit, but no, like I'm. I'm really no, excited for you. That'll be. That'll be really fucking cool. Except for the fact that my five year old is starting kindergarten next week, and I am deeply depressed about it. So yeah, I took off from tomorrow, and so today's a Wednesday for us recording. The Wednesday before the um, Labor Day weekend. This comes out on the tenth, but we recorded it ahead of time this time. Shockingly, so I'm going on vacation. So. I took off tomorrow and Friday, and we're just going to have little date days. Tomorrow, I'm taking him to the movies. I'm going to let him get all the junk food that I've normally say no to because I'm mean. <laughs> and then on Friday, I'm going to take him to the zoo. That'll be awesome. I'm really excited for you guys. Yeah, just the two of us. That'll, That'll be, be really nice. fun. I asked him if he wants to be my, if he wants to hang out with me and be my bestie because I always call <laughs> him my bestie and I call my youngest my best buddy. He always calls me bestie, but he got to hang out with dad the first half of the week and they had fun together. So he was saying he didn't want to hang out with me. And I was like, but aren't you my bestie? And he goes, yeah, I'm your bestie. <laughs> I know I'm mom. My kid has a speech delay. Don't make fun of me for talking like that. That's actually how I he talks, that. okay? <laughs> Should I just get into my preamble? Let's, Are we ready for a story? I'm going to do it this time. Let's call this meeting to order. We're going to Yes, please. Preamble. Preamble. Also, no, no, no. You know what I've been wanting to do? I thought about this last couple episodes and I always forget. We haven't talked in a long time for like, because I know like with 
TikTok and stuff and people saving our videos, then they'll like listen to our episodes. And some of them will listen to like our most recent episode. I feel like if you're listening to us and you don't know us, you probably understand the premise of the podcast. But if you are new here and you don't, just like a little background. I was just thinking the same exact thing the past few episodes that we should do this. Yeah. Yeah. I just always forget about it. So by Britain, that's Danny. We, we established that we're sisters. We are both. People also... always think that we're actually cousins, but people from the podcast. But no, we, we are sisters. That throws people off. Yeah. So it's the gay cousin club because both of us felt very seen by you like that meme that's like everybody has a gay cousin. You know, you're like you're sitting around the family reunion. You're wondering, like, who's the gay cousin? Like, then you're probably the gay cousin. We both found, realized we were the gay cousins, like, probably a little bit later in life than normal. So that is where the gay cousin club comes from. Because I think it would have been easier for us had we understood that, like, we were always, like, loud, passionate allies. I didn't realize um, I was queer as fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. I would get really angry and passionate about stuff and it would make me cry, and it, which is, like, a totally valid response for an ally as well. But I um, didn't realize it's because it was heading very close to home. Yeah. Uh, call was coming from inside the house for sure. Uh, so any hoozy, I just like we when we came up with this idea, it was because we felt like when we were younger in like the podunk kind of bigoted town <laughs> that we grew up in, it might have been e- like easier if we like saw ourselves in other figures. Like this isn't just a phase, like some people like mm-hmm. to say, or like this isn't just something new in 2023. Is some people like to say like these people have been around forever. It's just people try to hide their stories. So we like to talk about their yeah, stories. and it's not like the like trivialized um tokenized versions of things that we see when we do get representation or like us growing up in the early aughts of like that was the representation we got was basically like girls on mtv the tokenization yeah exactly um where no let's actually hear about this through history because they we have existed all right so we have been here before we're taking a little trip back we're going to the white house again whoa so for like for those for those US history buffs, um, we're gonna be talking okay, first disclaimer. We just had this whole heartfelt like the people have existed, tell their true stories. And uh, terrible time to say that because this is easily my most speculative and like circumstantial and like assumption based story. I don't know. Don't fucking come for if me. If it's the one I'm thinking of, no, because there were letters and I oh. am full yeah, on but on that gay train. There are letters, but they are quite read into gay train. I think it's very coded language. I think it's a very coded language, so clearly I'm on the gay train, but I'll let you all decide for yourself. Anyway, my friends, this is the story of the great emancipator himself, Abraham. Honest Abe Lincoln. He was gay. So, <laughs> backstory on Abe. I'm not going to get into like his whole spiel because, I mean, I know a lot of our listeners are not from the United States, which is very cool. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. But just some like very brief background. A lot of like Americans are familiar with Abraham Lincoln. Like everybody's done the third grade project on him. Yeah. Um, Honest Abe Lincoln. He had an upbringing in a humble one room log cabin in Kentucky. We were all taught that in elementary school. And he moved to Illinois to make a name for himself, enter politics. The land of Lincoln. Yeah. But the part of the story that seems to often be left out is like what happened in that in-between phase, like between his humble upbringing and his success in politics. Mm-hmm. So, like, what was life like for young Abe in Illinois before he found success? Who was he when he was just, like, this poor kid moving from Kentucky with a dream? That young, hopeful 21-year-old boy went through a number of jobs just trying to survive before he was able to see this dream in law and politics come true. Mm-hmm. Bust in the grind. Um, yeah, for sure. So, at, he was grinding. At different times, he was a shopkeeper, postmaster. He was a hired hand on boats, uh, river boats. Um Times are tough. He didn't have a I lot love of money. that postmaster, which sounds like such a like lofty title. It's just like, mm, yeah, it was one of those jobs I could get. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't have a lot of money. Eventually, though, he did pass the bar. He worked hard um, and he moved to Springfield at the age of 28 in hopes of starting his own law practice. He basically came into town like with the clothes on his back. So dirt poor. He was riding a borrowed horse. It wasn't even his horse. Oh. Um, he needed he literally just like, needed a place to sleep, honestly. So he did find a carpenter who agreed to like make him a bed frame and was which was like pretty luxurious at this point because we're talking like kind of like frontier era United yeah. States. Um but he didn't have any mattress or bedding for said bed or like a place to put it. So <laughs> also like what the fuck are you gonna do with it, babes? So <laughs> that's like I bought you a brand new dishwasher. Um you don't have a I, like, I don't have dishes or a house. <laughs> yeah. So this is how 
This is how Abe finds himself at A.Y. Ellison Company General Store. So he finds a mattress, pillow, sheets, blanket. Excellent. He goes to check out. This Where are you going to put it? Well, okay, but it rings up to $17. The first issue here, he, he cannot afford $17. For reference, like today, this is like $600. Whoop. He was uh, broke as a joke. Yeah. So he he knew he had the option to put it on credit. Like, he could do that pretty regularly at that time. But he really, he, he's on a stage. He feared <laughs> he just wouldn't be able to pay it back. He did not think, he was worried that he wasn't going to be able to make enough money as a lawyer to settle his debts. And he was not about to cheat the store out of that much money. And he felt really bad about it. Okay, that's so, cool, though. Which is sweet. I guess. Luckily, the store clerk, the guy that's, like, checking out the stuff, um, and maybe tricking him out, winky winky, <laughs> says, <laughs> he basically tells him, like, hey, I've got a big room upstairs. <laughs> With a bed, you know, it's like a one room apartment with a bed kind of deal. If you want, we can share it. And, you know, just bros being bros. That's so the broest thing to ever happen, obviously. Yeah. That's like me in yeah, college so me, doing that with a lot of my friends and being like, that's normal. <laughs> nope, you were gay, sweetheart. Okay, but don't do that because it seemed like you were like coming on to your friends. I meant, I also struggled with my friends, but I was certainly not like the club I was in that was very, very queer coded. Oh, that's what I, I was talking that, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, okay. I thought you meant like our roommates and stuff. And I was like, no, I was like laying in my roommate's bed all the time. And I was, for oh, wait, sure that's not. an international Girl, club. Listening. I can say that. No, Circle K, we called it Circle Gay because. It was where gay. where we were at that time. It was very gay. So like everybody be cuddling. And I yeah, I did not, not realize rody. I was part of the fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> yeah. So um, instantly I hear this Joshua Fry's uh, little idea. And I'm like, pee fruity. Right? <laughs> but at the time, <laughs> at the time, this wasn't super out of the ordinary. Like you have to remember, um, again, like Frontier Times America, um, even having but like I said before, an actual mattress was a luxury. So like two men sharing one wasn't wild because they weren't yeah. super easy to come by. Like people didn't have that kind of money. Not to mention this is also the time of like so-called intimate friendships. Exactly. It's kind of like the um, cis male version of the romantic female friendships that we've discussed before. So like before phrases like gay, bisexual, straight were used, um, this was used, intimate friendships. It didn't necessarily mean it was sexual, so they didn't have to define mm -hmm. it. It was just those historically very close friends. Yeah. But, I mean, so, it does make sense, like, if you look, I'm going to say back in time because I'm getting a very Western point of view right now. But um, mm -hmm. in times of higher poverty, that is more normal of a lot of people sharing a bed to split the cost oh, of yeah, rent yeah. even really more. It, that's what I was thinking. But then also I was going, like, <laughs> Oliver Twist style, right, in England, like, just everybody mm -hmm. be together. And again, yeah. I'm recognizing that this is a very Western point of view. For sure, for sure. Um, but like, I, uh, you know, I mentioned the romantic female friendships. We've talked about those in a number of episodes now. This It was normalized for women at, at the time to hold hands, write each other loving notes. It's smoochy kisses. Um, yeah, and at this time, men also could be more physically and emotionally intimate and have it be like shrugged off as just a really close friendship. Um, or maybe that, honestly, I don't, you know what, part of me is like, is that even true or is that just the spin historians put on it? No, yeah, I'm questioning everything. I really question that. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's rough because I feel like toxic masculinity has been around for so true, long. True, But also then, like, I don't know because, like... Dawn of time, baby. Yeah, but then also, like, we think about the Romans and shit, and they were, like, pretty fast and loose with some ideas that now... Well, until Christianity came along and demonized I suppose, it. and Christianity would yeah. still be big in America at this time, so I feel like maybe okay. historians are just straight washing it. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It Either way, though, this does really make me want to, like, kind of side note here, it makes me really want to cover, like, the cowboy oh era. Oh my god, yes, because please. We, we know. We know. We love a gay cowboy. Yeah. I mean, Timber Kate, come on, yeah, that was a fantastic episode. I'm still thinking of it. Hell yeah. Yeah. I gotta, oh, you know what? That actually reminds me, because we'll never wear gay ghosts in Yeah, spooky Phantom. season's coming up, girl. It's, bitch, bitch, it's October mm -hmm. right now. We are getting into spooky mm -hmm. season. And I'm pumped. I gotta, like, find some more spooky stories. It's astoundingly hard to find. You think, like, history is straight washed enough. His hauntings? Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> it is difficult um, to find. Fun fact, but, though. I'll dig into it. Our next episode, do you know what that's gonna be? I don't have it. Our one-year anniversary. Yeah. No. What? When did we publish our first episode? Let me look. Really? September 18th was our first one. Because, yeah, because it was a week after we decided we wanted to do it on my birthday weekend. It was like September 10th, 11th. How fucking the cool. Okay, carry That's on. Exciting. Sorry. Abraham Lincoln sharing yeah. a bed with his close yeah. friend. 
Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so sure. We we could say that this was just one of those close friends um, or even a friendship of convenience. Just, you know, like they didn't have money to do anything else. But because because he was dirt poor, he had the clothes on his back. He couldn't afford anything. Um, this continued on for more than just a few months while Abe got on his feet. It continued on for more than a year when he started to find success. They slept like this in one bed together well after Abe built his law practice for four years. He built years. his law practice. At that point, you would think, looking at it from today's perspective four years. of what that would mean wealth-wise, I don't know if that translates to back then. But Right. Like- four years that Abe was building his law practice, four years that Abe was becoming very successful in his law practice and could certainly afford different lodging. And bitch, Four years that they lived above a store that sold more fucking I'm mattresses. like, how small was that room? Could it literally only fit this one bed? But also, like, then can't you just, like, get rid of that bed and both of you have cots? If that's, like, really the thing? Or were you both like, I have a bad back. I don't, I don't really think that was ever an Cuddle me, big spoon. I don't think that was ever an option because Joshua, Joshua at one point said it himself, no two men were more intimate. <laughs> and um, Abe's law partner, Abe's law partner also said that Abe, quote, love this man more than anyone, dead or living. So what's also interesting here is that they lived like this even while Abraham, who knew that a respectable, respectable man of his time was expected to marry a woman of good birth, was courting his future wife, Mary Todd. Beard. <laughs> I see that beard <laughs> growing. Okay, because remember, Abe, Abe came to town when he was 28, so by now he's in his 30s. Both Joshua and Abraham are kind of if for the time period passed like what would be seen as the typical mm-hmm. marrying age and they had confided in each other a lot um that they just really were not interested in marriage to women and abe and mary continued this very on again Wait, off again they said kind specifically of specifically like, they weren't interested in marriage women we'll 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 we'll, we'll get into it Ooh, you're um, giving me tasers they continued, Abe and Mary were okay. like on and off again during all of this. Um, but they did eventually get engaged. Well, obviously, we know this because they get married, but they, <laughs> they get engaged, right? Then around I'm, the be- I'm picturing, you know, those super tacky, cheesy um, movies where like the gay boy is like trying to get a beard and like it's really overdone. But like he goes to like kiss a girl or something and it's like starts gagging or it's like, oh, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. That's, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's that because some people do think that he might have been bisexual. So I don't, I guess I can't speak no, no, no. his attraction that's just, or not. When you said Mary, that they were on and off again, yeah, that's I know what, what I thought saying. of. Uh, it's just like that over the top yeah. day of like, I just need to work up the courage. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So we're at the big beginning of 1841. Abraham is engaged to marry Todd. Joshua pretty abruptly, after, you know, all these years of them living together, moves back home to mm-hmm. Kentucky to find a wife of his own. This also happens the same week that Abe breaks off his engagement to Mary and plunges into one of the deepest depressions of his life. Interesting. So, read a lot like some other stories we've read. Timelines are interesting. Right. So many historians kind of like poo-poo the idea of Abraham Lincoln being gay. Um, They believe his depression is due to the heartbreak of losing Mary. But there are those few that see this as a direct result of Joshua leaving, that he realizes like, Oh my God, he's actually going to leave and marry somebody else. Like, I was just going to marry somebody else, but we were so going to be together. So, like, you know, breaks it off, plunges into a depression. I thought we were just going to have a secret thruple. Yeah. And there appear to be some letters that you mentioned earlier that, again, circumstantially, because it's kind of people reading into it, it does feel like coded language to me, but that that back up this theory. But regardless of what you believe, I kind of set that aside for now. We'll get to it later. The same week that Joshua left, Abe's friends came and cleared his home of razors and knives so he wouldn't That's fucking saying something. And I'm sorry. You said that he and Mary were on again, off again. Yeah. But Josh and him were the only constant for all those years. I'm sorry. It's because Josh left, not because like, him and what? Mary called it quits for a second. Yeah. And, and then even though they got rid of all those things, they saw him like uh-huh. withering away. Uh-huh. Like just a shell of who he formerly was. He barely got out of bed. He barely spoke. The only thing keeping him going was that he he just always had this um, feeling like he had something left to achieve. Like he needed to do oh, something ABP. important and leave his mark on the world. So, quick disclaimer. Yeah. We recorded this two days ago and then my microphone shit out halfway through, less than halfway through, a quarter of the way through the fucking story, apparently. And we thought it was going again. Told the whole story. Everything was great. I was in a fantastic <laughs> mood. It was a good time. 
now it was a really good recording danny listened to it and it was just her fucking voice so i'm back two days later to tell her a story she's already heard and i'm really irritated about it i made myself i made myself a liquory coffee to try to cheer myself up because i was also having a oh, shitty shit. night and but this room is really hot so now all it's doing is making my body sweaty on the inside so that i'm getting sweaty on the outside no i'm just very angry and i'm sweaty wherever we left off last time we were talking about like historians arguing about was abraham in this deep depression because of losing mary or because joshua left so deep depression but he kind of was hanging on just because he felt like he needed to do something that was worth remembering so even with that shred of hope for his future he was like barely a human at this point kind of just like a shell of himself for like a full seven months So during this period, Abe wrote to his law partner, he said, I am now the most miserable man living. If what I feel were equally distributed to the whole human family, there would not be one cheerful faith on the earth. Whether I shall ever be better, I cannot tell. I awfully forebode I shall not. To reign as I am is impossible. I must die or be better, it appears to me. And he eventually did get better. So, you know, we can make those arguments about who led him to feeling this low, but it's very clear who pulled him out of that misery super quickly Mm -hmm. he receives a letter from joshua one day um and joshua is inviting him for a visit and basically like reading the last word already packing a bag (laughs) he heads to kentucky right away they reunite um abe seems to have returned to his normal self joshua takes care of him brings him back to health and they're just back at it again um weirdly though or interestingly i guess however you want to think about it while visiting with joshua abe actually like played wingman for him joshua was attempting to court a young woman named fanny henning but her uncle kept getting in the way so abe basically like distracts the uncle while the couple is meeting up like rendezvous Um, look over here (laughs) so yeah basically i don't know it kind of just it maybe he was into fanny too but it kind of seems to me like they cared about each other they loved each other but they knew what societal expectations were for them if they wanted to be successful yeah and they were both intelligent men oh, mm-hmm. and over time they both wrote to each, other, each other a lot about like how they didn't want to be married like weren't really interested in being with a woman so regardless of like what happened or didn't happen between them on this trip and I'm, I'm very much reading between the lines of what happened like what got him feeling so much better yeah no, for, for me between the lines is the only script <laughs> <laughs> So Abraham returns to Illinois in much better health and his health seemed to stay better because um, they were staying in regular contacts now. Like they had fallen off for like those seven months, but they're kind of back to normal. I mean, they're not sure then anymore, but (laughs) they're like writing each other pretty regularly. These letters, some of them, I should say, still exist. So not surprisingly, like Lincoln was in politics, of course. And at this time, letters from Joshua to him would have probably been damaging to his reputation. But there are still surviving letters of Abe's to Joshua. So this is where we're like able to see things shift in their relationship a little bit. And I feel um, like this is similar to your last episode that you did when one of the G's kept the letter from the other G over time um, where the letters were kept. Yeah. So in 1842, in February, um, Joshua does go through with marrying Sammy. Um, and days later, on February 13th, he receives like a pretty like intense letter from abraham and again this is like where people differ in opinion you definitely do have to like read into some coded language to think that there might be a relationship happening here but if you remember back to them sharing a bed for four years after abe had money and was successful i feel like maybe it's not so between the lines <laughs> yeah but he said when this shall reach you you will have been Fanny's husband several days you know my desire to befriend you is everlasting that i will never cease while i know how to do anything we will always hereafter be on ground that I may have never occupied, and consequently, if advice were needed, I might advise wrong. I do fondly hope, however, that you will never again need any comfort from a fraud. But I should be mistaken in this. Should excessive pleasure still be accompanied with a painful counterpart at times? Still, let me urge you, as I have ever done, to remember in the depth and even the agony of despondency that very shortly you are to feel well again. I am now fully convinced that you love her as ardently as you are capable of loving. Which that, I feel like he could say, like, you love her more than anything. But to me, it feels like you do love her and you care about her as a person, but, like, as much as you're able to. Exactly. Yeah. That's, I don't know, that's the vibe I get. And I feel like Um, so much of this letter so far is coded in duty, right? That, like, I understand that this is what you have to do, but if you are struggling too much and you feel like you need to step out kind of thing, like, to me, I'm reading it as, if you miss me too much, no. 
remember your wife and remember that these feelings too shall pass. Remember your duty kind of thing. Yeah. And that's actually the part we're going to get into next. But oh, sorry. You said you're ever being happy in her presence and your intense anxiety about her health. If there were nothing else would place this beyond all dispute in my mind. I'm inclined to think it probable that your nerves will fail you occasionally for a while. But once you get them fairly graded now, that is tr- trouble is over forever. I think if I were you, in case my mind were not exactly right, I would avoid being idle. I would immediately engage in some business or go to making preparations for it, which would be the same thing. If you went through the ceremony calmly or even with sufficient composure not to excite alarm in any present, you are safe beyond question. And in two or three months, to say the most, will be the happiest of men. So, like, stick it out. You're going to be okay. Yeah. I hope with tolerable confidence that this letter is a plaster for a place that is no longer sore. God grant it may be so. Okay, so (laughs) the part where he was saying that basically, like, I encourage you, like, if your nerves get the better of you to, like, just go keep, go get yourself busy, go do something. It, like, it reminds me of, (laughs) I don't know if it's, like, old Catholic or Christian or whatever, but, like, if someone was starting to feel some feelings, it's like, nope, go busy your hands because busy hands can't sin. (laughs) Like, don't go with the impure thoughts. Oh, he goes on to say, I would desire you to give my particular respects to Fanny, but perhaps you will not wish her to know that you have received this, lest she should desire to see it. So he basically says, like, he'd love to hear from Fanny. But at the same time, he's like, you might not want her to see this letter, which could be because they were talking some shit. But also, also it could like, be because he, he could says. could be between the line. <laughs> well, well, and then also he says, write me whenever you have leisure, yours forever. I mean, interesting. Come on. And then, P.S., I have been quite a man ever since you left. So, like, let's unpack this shit. <laughs> he says, he says he hopes he should never be in pain like he's been in before again and tells him it'll pass, which is very sweet. Could just be commiserating about unhappy relationships or could mean that he knows Joshua, like, can't truly be happy in a relationship that isn't right for him because it's with a woman. Mm-hmm. Also talks about intense anxiety Joshua was probably feeling during the ceremony, which, like, I've been there, but it was not for the same reasons. <laughs> Um, just because it was hot. Mine was mainly. <laughs> mine was hot and there was like people. And that was literally everything I didn't want it to be. I did not want other people to be there. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to elope. <laughs> I would imagine for Joshua, part of like the fear and anxiety also would be like, are they going to see through this charade? Are they going to call me on it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he says that Joshua may not want Sammy to see the letter, which could be because it's that they've been talking, like I said before, like they're talking some shit like about him being afraid to get married. Mm-hmm. Or because he finds it fucking years forever and like dead at, I've been quite a man since you've left. So like, that I mean, historian, hor- I just call the historians Horians and I stand by that. <laughs> so historians have speculated on this one, but to me, I'm imagine, and we discussed this last time because we kind of went back and forth that we like thought about it differently, but I imagine them discussing that as men they had to find their wives and do what men do because around this time, Abraham's getting back together with Mary. Maybe he's doing some manly things. If you feel me, that's what I feel like yeah. he was saying. Like, I did what you told me to. How do you feel about it? You know, kind of like, <laughs> I've been doing very sweet the whole time, but it felt like, <laughs> it kind of feels like a little bit of a brag, but also like a little bit of a twisting the knife. Yeah. Where then last time I took it as like, what if they had some sort of falling out ish type thing, right? Of like, we both know what it means to be a man. Like, so I have to go out and marry this woman. I have to go and do my manly duties. And like, what if he's like, mm-hmm. I have to. I have been quite the man. I have been stepping up. But either way, I feel like both of us are taking it as Abe is humble bragging that he's been getting around. <laughs> getting it. Getting it. Getting it. Getting it. Getting it and getting um, fit. So from other letters, it's also pretty clear that Joshua was definitely dreading his wedding night. He wrote to Abraham that like after it happened, he said the wedding night was, quote, indescribably horrible, which that would break break my fucking heart if someone described it that way. <laughs> so there might be some, some other reasons they don't want Fanny. My, to my wedding night, we got Hardee's. I don't want to know. Like, oh, okay. I, was gonna say, I don't want to know what your wedding day <laughs> so That was literally it. <laughs> she helped me get all the bobby pins out of my hair. We had Hardee's and Cheers Dark Fries and then fell asleep. Oh, I slept with my bobby <laughs> pins in. It was a great night. Yeah. So as they're writing to each other about missing each other and like fears about marrying these women, Abe also encloses a decoy letter at one point for Fanny so as not to arouse suspicion. So like that is so fucking shady. Either, yeah, it's either dudes being bros or 
he was like, I'm the mistress, basically. Don't let her see my letter. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. I'm the mistress. It's so fucking funny. I'm just picturing good old Abe Lincoln. I'm the mistress. Yeah. Yours forever, baby. <laughs> so, XOXO. <laughs> so, so, he wrote openly in his letters about his jealousy of their, like, Abe wrote openly in his letters about his jealousy of Joshua's relationship, too. Like, why are you so jealous if you don't want to get married? Are you jealous of the hit? So it's not that you're jealous of marriage. Are you really mad that you just had to share your good buddy? Really? Is that what you're so bent out of shape about that you took time to mail a whole ass letter about yeah. it with a decoy letter? No. No, 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 no. Like he's in his 30s at this point. Like it's not like. And he's got a whole law practice. Yeah. Like dude's got things going on. I just mean like it's not like when you're really young and like somebody's spouse kind of like, well, comes around and then you're like, hey, they're mine, you know? Yeah, that's how it was when my husband and I got together. A couple of his friends were definitely like that a little bit. But I think that's like we were like 19, 20, yeah. getting engaged, basically, which is wild. <laughs> it is. You guys were babies. But this coffee is so fucking bad. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It's, it's bad. It's like I have almond milk creamer because I'll get bubble guts if I use real creamer. And almond milk creamer is just categorically bad. It's not good. It's not no, fucking it's, good. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised you get It's the bad. No, I'm an oat milk girly, mm-hmm. but I also will drink whatever dairy-free creamer my partner buys for me. And this is what was available this time. And I appreciate him and I'm drinking it. But it's not great. I'm being really and brave about it. I'm being really brave about it. And I also put that coffee liqueur that you made me, I put that in mm-hmm. there. And that's good. But then I was like, I need to be stronger because I'm in a bad fucking oh, no. mood. And I, so I used vodka. First of all, Pretty. I don't like you vodka. Don't. I don't like vodka. I've had the same <laughs> bottle of Smirnoff <laughs> in my fucking plastic bottle of Smirnoff in my oh, freezer my for years years truly years because we moved it from our old house into this house which we've now lived in for almost two years we moved it into this house so i bought it for a party at some point we, we, we don't do parties anymore no. we're old we have two children how long do you think it's been around i don't know i'm sure it doesn't go bad but it's not good i think it's just been bad since day one well, yeah because it's plastic Smirnoff but but my boobs are sweating when oh, you my said God, that you I'm had good. like Bye. hot alcohol tea i assumed you put like irish cream liqueur or something in it now just fucking vodka. Girl, why <laughs> why do you always think that i have like a whole liquor cabinet stocked i've said so many times on here that i have the same but i still have this one can of twisted tea from like two augusts ago sitting in my fridge i don't know i feel like Irish cream liqueur is just one of those that, like, it sits around forever. Like, why do you even have this? And then, I don't know. Maybe that's just a no, thing. No, I get, I get that around. I get it on Thanksgiving every year. And then I sip it through the holidays and it does not go to waste. Oh. The little bit of alcohol that I do purchase does not go to waste because I'm just not much of a drinker. So, like, I will only get what I know I'm actually going to have. Yeah. Because otherwise things like this happen. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're brave. Gross. I hate hot alcoholic drinks. Like boozy coffee i want to love it so much i hate it oh wait no i love a fucking boozy I, coffee what you I gotta do listen boozy listen, hot listen, chocolate. Listen, listen, listen 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 shut shut your beautiful mouth listen okay <laughs> so so what you gotta do you gotta get good creamer like a good gonna make you poop your brains out creamer <laughs> you frog you frog that bitch up okay you get the caramel kind you frog that bitch up no you shush Shut, 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 shut your people mouth. I told you already. Shut I don't it. Have okay? a you froth it up. You can whisk it then. Um, like a fucking peasant. Okay. <laughs> and then, okay. Then you I pour my coffee into the creamer. Or no, 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 not yet. Okay. <laughs> then I get I get the the salted salted caramel baileys. It's so much better than the regular. Salted caramel baileys. Then you mix that into it. Okay. Then you pour the coffee on top. Otherwise, it's just like cold and it sits on top. So you pour the coffee on top. The froth is going to come to the top. Okay. Now, this is the most important step. You grind a little sea salt on top. Mm-hmm. Bitch, bitch. It's so good. Thinking about that, now I'm going to take a drink of my coffee and just imagine. <laughs> oh, flat red. So not the same. Okay. Blech. Also, you're a caramel girly. You say caramel. Okay, caramel? you're talking about the pronunciation. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I grew, I, we grew up saying caramel, yeah. obviously, for a long time. I don't really, like, have ca- car- caramel caramel very uh-huh. much, it, except in drinks. I love, a, like, a salted caramel beverage. Um, so, listen, and so my husband is a caramel okay. girly, and he, like, he's always said caramel, and I used to pick on him about it, but now when I try to say caramel, it comes out caramel. 
So I just, I, I force myself to switch to caramel because otherwise caramel's fine. Caramel's fine. Caramel. It, you sound yeah, like a fucking moron. So I have to, I have to, it's like I stutter over it every time otherwise. And it's embarrassing and he will point it out and nobody bullies me more than he does. And nobody bullies him more than I do. And so I have to say it that way. Okay. No, like me even trying to say caramel, I feel like it doesn't, it chews, chews in my mouth wrong. <laughs> I like that he's a caramel girl. No, that's beautiful. I appreciate I love that about that for him. him. But I was just no, all of a sudden, like you too. said that multiple times. I'm like, that's not my sister. What? Yeah. No, I've had to, tra- I've had to train myself to do that. Cause otherwise car- I say caramel, caramel or caramel, caramel and caramel is for sure. Not how you say it out. <laughs> the bears. Hello. Would you like a salted caramel chew? These are the things, these are the things that like literally cause me anxiety. If I pronounce it weird, I'll think about that all fucking night because of mental illness. Also, did, okay, did, speaking of my mental illness and things I stress out about, did you, did it, did it save my story? Like the one that you're giving me shit about? I don't remember. So you should tell it just a while we're shitting on me already. Let's just continue to talk about what a degenerate piece of crap I am. So if you haven't picked up on it yet, I have an anxiety disorder. Okay. So usually I, I listen to my asthma. I listen to my asthma at night to try to put me to sleep. Okay. Eventually, though, ASMR. I'm going to wake okay. up. I'm like, your asthma? You listen to your asthma? Like, are you just sitting there wheezing <laughs> at night? No. Like, my, my, my partner will, like, give me a little forehead kiss and be like, oh, good night. Enjoy your asthma. So I listen to my asthma. Anyway, but so I'm, I listen to my asthma and go to sleep. Everything's great. Okay. It takes me a couple hours, but I get there. Eventually, I'm going to wake up at 2 30. I'm going to wake up at 2 30. And you know why? Because I've said something dumb that day. <laughs> And I have to sit and think about it. I've had an interaction with someone who just said, how are you doing? And then I told them actually how I was doing. No, no. And that's not always a bad thing. A lot of times it's a great thing. But I will, I'll just keep talking. They don't want to know. No, they don't. But I do that. So I, I, I don't know why. Sometimes it's because like, it's I have some very nice coworkers. Mm-hmm. So like sometimes I just want to chat. And then I'm like, oh my God, bring it. what if they didn't want to chat? What if they didn't? And it's a give and take. It's not just me talking. But I am reflecting on it. Like, what if they didn't want to have that chat? What if, it, I, what if I'm the coworker? What if I'm, have you ever watched, um, what is it, Things We Do in the Dark or something like that? I saw the is movie, that the, but is that I that didn't the vampire watch show? the show. I've watched like a, a singular episode, but am I the energy vampire? That's what I worry about. <laughs> anyway, so I, okay, so eventually once I, once I get through whatever I did that was embarrassing that day, I spiral into my greatest hits. Greatest hits are going to come up around 3 a.m. right around that witching hour because I haunt myself, okay? <laughs> and that's what's going to happen. <laughs> and the, the number one. The fucking number one bitch that I always go back to at a place I used to teach, okay? I was talking to the, the associate principal and I, something I told her was, oh no, I was, I was, I, t- I had to tell her that I was pregnant. It wasn't like a, oh, fun announcement. It was just like a, like, sup, okay, whatever. So anyway, I tell her like, um, I'm pregnant and she's like, oh, and like her hands kind of went up like, oh, like surprised because like it was a busy morning and that's probably like not what she was expecting to hear. Okay, but when her hands go up, mm-hmm. When her hands go up, I think she's giving me a congratulatory hug. Okay. So I go in for the hug. I go in for the hug. But here's the thing, bitch. Here's the thing. I'm not a toucher. I don't fucking hug. I don't hug. Well, especially not people that no, I don't, don't like know or like I'm not super not comfortable with. Like I'll hug people. I'll hug people, but like only if they initiate it usually. <laughs> and <laughs> well, I, she I don't initiate hugs. <laughs> So as I'm going in for this hug, I'm just thinking, I'm seeing it on her face. I'm seeing, like, time slowed down. Time slowed right down. <laughs> and I'm, like, moving moving through quicksand. And I see her, I see her face go, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. And I'm still going. And it's like, it's like I'm on more, it's like I'm, I'm more outside of my, it's like I'm outside of my fucking body watching it happen. And I can't stop it. I can't stop it. And as I'm hugging her, I'm going, internally, I'm going, no, bitch. <laughs> like, it's. Oh my god, I am sweating so badly right now. I'm sure against your will. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was so like such an like such an HR violation for sure. Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Uh, well, speaking yeah, of HR violations, violations, let's get back to Abe. Abe. Well, I'm sorry, you know I really spiraled. That's okay. Whatever. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> so, well, well, fuck me. I guess. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. I, I I I do love you. I hate myself. It's I hate myself. It's fine. Okay, so anyway, Abe is jealous. He's also spiraling. He's also spiraling. <laughs> he said, segwayed. That was really yeah, good. That I'm was really good. good at this. Nice. All right. So he said he felt like he was going to be forgotten by Joshua now that Joshua was married, but like he was still happy that Joshua was happier in the marriage than they thought he would be. So they, they both seemed to like dread it so much, but like they didn't have any problem committing to each other. Mm-hmm. They basically lived like husbands for four years. 
Yeah. So then so. like being that absolutely fucking like shit your pants petrified to get married. Clearly, it wasn't the commitment aspect that you were afraid yeah. of. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because that's like, that's fine. Like not everybody wants to be yeah. married, but it doesn't seem to me like the commitment thing is what freaked them mm-hmm. out. But so like later that year, so that was February. Now we're in October. Later that year in a letter from October, it seems like Abe's trying to get Joshua to like talk him into getting married. Um, Because remember, he's back with Mary at this oh, yeah. point. So in one passage, he writes, but I began this letter not for what I have been writing, but to say something on this subject, which you know to be of such infinite solicitude to me. The immense suffering you endured from the first days of September till middle of February, you never tried to conceal from me, <laughs> as I well understood. No, first of all, first days of September to middle of February, that was him in his relationship with Fanny before they got married. Yeah, leading so up like, to the marriage. Well, yeah, like you shouldn't be that. Okay, anyway. You have now been the husband of a lovely woman nearly eight months. That you are happier now than you were the day you married her, I well know. For without, you would not be living. Yeah, because he had said it was indescribably horrible. <laughs> because so, you would be dead if you were still as upset yeah, you were he, the day you got married. Yeah, he's like, you would have let Jesus take the wheel and take you off that cliff. <laughs> like, you would have been done. Yeah. Oh, Lord. So he says, um, but I have your word for it, too. And the returning elasticity of spirits, which is manifested in your letters. But I want to ask a closer question. Are you now, in feeling as well as judgment, glad you are married as you are? From anybody but me, this would be an impudent question not to be tolerated, but I know you will pardon it in me. Please answer it quickly, as I feel impatient to know. And then, he, again, ends with yours forever. He's, like, begging, like, please, will I talk to you? Like, tell me I'm going to be yeah. okay. Yeah. Am I going to be okay? Yeah. So, yeah, like, he's like, am I going to be able to endure this pain? Are you okay? Am I going to be okay? Um, it's, He's basically asking, like, two very different things. Are you happy in this marriage? Or are you happy you just finally went through with it? Mm-hmm. Like leading up to it, the back and forth was that worse. So he does end up marrying Mary Todd a month later. So it's clear why he was so like in a rush for a response. Mm-hmm. And it seems like he may have predicted some of his fears accurately because one wedding guest said, quote, Lincoln looked and acted as if he were going to slaughter. <laughs> That's so fucking just sad. That is so sad. So sad. Um was not a short-lived experience either. That misery, um, unlike apparently Fanny and Joshua, Abe and Mary were miserable as a couple. Um, they, uh, Abe avoided spending time at home at all because they fought so much when they were together. That's so rough. Mary apparently had like a pretty like volatile, violent streak. Um, she would get uh, like throw things at him during arguments. And <laughs> one of the sources I read had like a list <laughs> with examples. Uh-huh. But here are some examples of things she threw at him. <laughs> so, and uh, like domestic domestic violence is not funny, but like just it was a very specific. You'll, okay, you'll see. Uh, potatoes, books, firewood, and hot coffee. Oh, Jesus. So God. that's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's trying to do damage. Mm-hmm. Unless they're the potatoes that I grew in and, my garden this year because they're like the size of a penny. A penny. Ah, a oh. Lincoln. Me. Oh, but I'm done. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, and also she chased him out of the house with a knife. Yeah. Okay. And that's one thing that like. I have heard this as well, like from not is he gay sources of like she she Ooh. was like she had some issues going on. Where that's that's yeah some mental illness that's for scary. sure. Yeah. That's really sad, yeah. especially if he but felt I'm pressured like, into marrying her. That like he got pressured into oh, sure. essentially domestic violence. Yeah, but on a less sad note, everybody out there, were you the knife holder or the the person running away, siblings? <laughs> because. Everybody was one of them. Danny and I were a little bit different. Danny would threaten to kill me with a knife. And instead of her chasing me with one, I would be like, all right, then do it, bitch. And I would like hold a knife and I'd be like, fucking do it. And she was, and she would start crying and be like, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. And but- then when we turn the tables, she would chuck glasses at me. I threw, okay, calm down. I threw the plastic ones and you know No, that. Brittany, you threw a pint glass at me. Granted. Oh, shit. No, I do remember that. I do remember that. That was an accident. That was an accident because I was... How do you accidentally chuck a glass at someone? No, because I was washing dishes. They were under the sofa, uh-huh. right? I remember that because our friend, our friend that, like, lived kind of, like, next door to us, whatever, like, our backyard uh-huh. were connected. He was sitting at the table doing homework after school. I was washing the dishes. You were at the table with him talking your shit, <laughs> and I was talking my shit, and we were screaming over each other, and he was just sat there quietly doing his homework. He was such a sweetie, but... <laughs> 
So like I'm, I didn't think washing dishes and I was taunting you with the first one. I threw it and I was laughing and then you got really mad. So then I threw another one and you got even more mad. And then I got kind of mad too. So I just like grabbed the last one and threw it, but I pulled it or the sunsy water. And that's when I threw the glass on it. It was just like the muscle was already, like the momentum yeah. was already going. I, I really didn't mean to Luckily, do that Luckily, you had bad aim and it landed on the carpet behind me, not anywhere in the kitchen. So yeah, well, I'm not one of the athletic gays. Okay, Danny? No, I just meant otherwise our ass would have been grass. Like, it didn't matter what we did to each other oh, for while sure. they weren't home. As long as we didn't fucking break <laughs> anything. Yeah. Oh. Nobody died in our knife fight. And nobody died in Abe and Mary's knife fight. I'm killing these segues. All right. So <laughs> nine months after the wedding night, their first child was born. So this is what some historians have used um, to be like, Lincoln was straight man. He made four babies. But like plenty of like gay and bi dudes have gone so on to many. So like. Fuck up with that theory. Um, there are some historians though, that have alluded to his queerness, such as Carl Sandburg in his 1926 publication, Abraham Lincoln, The Prairie Years. He uses coded language. So I think you kind of have to be in the know to pick up on some of this. But then again, I don't know. It kind of feels like a flapping you in the face. Maybe I'm biased, but it's a quote about him and Joshua. Their birth, the loins and tissues of their fathers and mothers, accident, fate, providence, had given these two men streaks of lavender, spots soft as violets. Hmm. Hmm. Lavender. Why are you talking so flowery? Lavender. Hmm? Come on now. You're not fooling me. That lavender haze. Exactly. Where my gaylers at? A gay culture historian, Judy Gron, explains the sacred color associated with gayness is lavender. And she says violets were worn by both men and women in 16th century England to indicate that they did not intend to marry. So soft as may violets. Uh, and then also 1930s slang, a streak of lavender meant like uh, a queer man. So this feels to me like coded language that gay people are for sure going to pick up on. Maybe people not in the know wouldn't get it. Yeah, maybe but... think that he's just being really literary here. But like, yeah, yeah. like, oh, it's so beautiful. And it's like he yeah. was gay. <laughs> they was so, gay. So honestly, regardless, like I said before, whether you want to read into that relationship or not, there's been and others that were a little harder to turn a blind eye to. <laughs> and I think part of what people have argued is that like it wasn't known to have girlfriends in his youth. Um, which is not like weird. Mm -hmm. And after his death, his stepmother even said that he was never fond of girls. But again, not evidence of anything. Um, plenty of men, straight men, don't like yeah. women. I think we know that. His former law partner told this tale of a great love that Abe had when he was younger. And that's kind of like why his heart was like cold to women, like, why he wasn't like dating around when he was young. Um, it's because he had this younger, or when he was younger, he had this love named Anne Revelage who had passed away tragically. So it kind of scarred him for life. Sure. But that story has been debunked by historians and not just like the lavender, team lavender historians. Like many of them have shrugged it off as a story the law partner told to kind of explain why Abe didn't date a lot then of women. And why would he do that? Seems... Why would he do that? That does seem weird. That does seem weird. <laughs> so in 2012, there was a HuffPost article in which um, Reverend Cindy Love was interviewed and she talked about William Herndon, who was that law partner. She says, William Herndon was my great, great uncle, and he was gay, and he was Lincoln's lover. What? Wait, what? What? <laughs> so, she said, like, this information is well known in her family. It's a story that's been passed down, um, but it's never been made public. It was uh, kind of like a not so well kept family secret, basically. Um, and, like, why? I, I just don't get, like, dudes being bros. Like, I'm going to make up a story about a tragic woman in his past. Like, that just seems like a bit much. He could have just said, like, yeah, he's playing tricks all the time at the office. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, no. But, to explain why my friend never dated someone, I would 100% be like, no, you did. She just, like, is from a different country. <laughs> yeah. If she goes to a different school, you wouldn't know her. <laughs> so, <laughs> my girlfriend lives in Canada. <laughs> There were also apparently some other young men that Abe spent time with back in his early days in Illinois. But these stories are a little like, they're a little like, okay, so they're a little scandalous. I saw them in like a couple sources. But to me, some of the, the more like scholarly sources that I read that really get into like, you know, Team Lavender here. I, I was in, it was interesting to me that they didn't bring up these stories, which kind of to me felt like maybe they don't hold it like water. Did it feel like almost so, like, a, like a Wattpad kind of? A little bit, a little bit. Because one of them goes on to describe Abraham's muscular thighs, or his bare, <laughs> mus bare muscular thighs. Like, it feels a little bit like like a gay, like a gay Abraham fanfic. <laughs> gay Abraham? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of got to show now. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the wheels are going <laughs> way up. <off. laughs> okay. All right. So now, a uh, story that does hold more water, in my opinion, because it was, like, in actual written records from the time period. Okay. Um, 
So Mary and Abraham moved to Washington, of course, because Abe wins the presidency in 1860. Um, at this point, things weren't looking good in either of Abe's relationships. He and Joshua had drifted apart. Mary and Abe were obviously not doing well, sleeping in different beds, which that we Googled this last time. That may have been normal at the time for them not to be sleeping in different beds. But remember, he slept in the same bed as Joshua when they lived above a store that sold fucking mattresses. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it seems to me like he doesn't, he doesn't mind sharing a bed. So, yeah, because I was um, going to say, like, it could be, oh, maybe one of them snores or some shit like that, right? But it's, right. no, yeah. no. Because, like, we were saying last time, like, your partner snores. Mine had, like, restless leg issues. Mm-hmm. So there are plenty of times that we're not sharing about yeah. it. And, but this is a little bit different. Yeah. So the wife of an assistant secretary of the Navy, Virginia Woodbury Fox, she basically, like, kept tabs on the White House tea. And I am still referring to her as, like, the White House gossip girl. XOXO. So she writes in her journal. So XO Virginia. She writes in her journal, there is a bucktail soldier here devoted to the president, drives with him, and when Mrs. L is not home, sleeps with him. What? What? Indeed. Yeah. It's definitely telling that, oh, it's when Mrs. L isn't here. Yeah. Which you hide in. Also, okay, I can get into this this soldier's information. So this time, because I know we're going to go off on a tangent like we did last time. I don't know. I'm going to apologize in advance to the Davids and the Derricks in our lives. We love you. And your names are great. They are beautiful names. We are not making fun of you at all. It's the fact we felt like, okay, so the soldier's name was David Derrickson, <laughs> which together was named to us sounded like Chad GPT tried to write a name for a white man. Yeah. But like David is a great name. Derek is a great name. David Derrickson, that's Chad GPT trying to understand frat boys. It was very confusing. Yeah, it's it. like they but, tried to make it. Um, no, I yeah. am. But no, we do love those names. So like, <laughs> no hate to the Davids and the Derrick in our lives. We love them so much. And their names are beautiful. Um, anyway, so David Derrickson had <laughs> intense eyes, a rugged black beard, hottie. Okay. He, he had the crew of the military. Um, so the buck, the bucktail soldier thing was, uh, from the bucktail brigade from Pennsylvania. So the, they were nicknamed for the, like the fur hat that they wore. Oh, yeah. So that's just what bucktail meant. So Abe asks David Derrickson to ride with him on a trip from his summer cottage to the White House. And then after that, four months inseparable, baby. A fellow soldier and a historian, Thomas Chamberlain, wrote about David Derrickson, and I have to say his whole name every time. <laughs> um, in double three, in Mrs. Lincoln, Mrs. Lincoln's absence, he frequently spent the night at the president's cottage, sleeping in the same bed with him, and it is said making use of His Excellency's nightshirt. Oh, gee. thus began an intimacy that continued until the following spring. Okay, I'm sorry, but you're gonna go ahead and tell me that David Derrickson went along for this, like jaunt of travel and like stayed with the president and one the president doesn't have enough beds that you have to sleep with him okay sure 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 but also like bring you know you no you don't have any you don't have any other clothes you don't you don't have your own yeah. nightgown but you gotta wear his again mm-hmm. again where else do we see this trope romantic comedies when the girl stays over and she wears the boy's t-shirt mm-hmm. that she likes. You're the girl from a romantic yep. comedy, Derek Derrickson, David Derrickson. David Derrickson. Put them respect in his name. No, I'm sorry. He, this, he, he was 44, so he was nine years younger than Lincoln. Um, and at the start of their affair, he was the father of nine children <laughs> by two different wives. Um, apparently, one of his sons was already grown, and he also served the president. So that's a little scandalous. It is. Um, but basically, they were, functioning, they were functioning as a couple. They did everything together. They attended church. They toured the battlefields because the war is kicking off. Um, it kind of seems like Abe didn't really try to hide his relationships with men, mm-hmm. which could have been for a number of reasons. Maybe they were just those intimate friendships that were normalized at the time, apparently. No. The conspiracy theorist in me says, absolutely not. No. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm like full on. People are looking at him and his boyfriend and he's just daring them. Like, fucking say it. I'm the president. Yeah. What are you going to say? Say what you're you going to you, say. You, you, you you say. Gonna say the president's queer? <laughs> Who's going to believe you, Ooh. bitch? And then, like, kisses yeah. his boyfriend. Or it could also be that he, like, just didn't think that anyone would suspect anything from the married president with four kids. Yeah. You know? Or his, it's the he doesn't care. like say bestie it. with nine so, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so as much as Abe liked his time with David Derrickson, he, it, David Derrickson was not Joshua. And fate did eventually bring Joshua back into his life. Almost 20 years after they separated from each other, Abe's the president. The Civil War is going on. Um, and Union General William T. Sherman is getting desperate. He needs supplies, and the president, Washington, you know, in Washington, they're not—they're ignoring his requests. He's not getting the things he mm-hmm. needs, and his troops are in need of some help. 
Okay, he's getting super desperate. So Sherman, kind of a last ditch effort here for some. I guess he knows Joshua. I don't know, small world. Yeah. I guess. Um, he he goes to Joshua for help because he knows that Joshua and me were close at one time. So, backstory here, kind of in the time that's been since then, in the twenty years, Josh has gone from a poor shopkeeper to successful for his time because he was tick jazz. I don't want a slave owner. Joshua, no, a slave owner. We were rooting yeah. for you. Everybody was rooting for you. Um, so he and Abe had disagreed politically on this for a long time, which may have contributed to them drifting apart. Um, and th- I think Danny brought up a good point last time. I think like in American history, too, we do like to glorify Abraham Lincoln, oh, yeah. you know, the great emancipator, of course. Um, he was not necessarily opposed morally to slavery, oh, yeah, which no. is why I phrase that as he, Dr. when Abe disagreed politically. Yeah. Um, the whole like huh. emancipation well. proclamation and everything, people always see him as like, oh, he he was on the side of the union because he hated slavery. He was an abolitionist. And it's like, no, he like was reading. He was reading the words on the wall kind of thing. Like he he saw the political advantage of mm-hmm. ending slavery. He didn't like politically. That's not what he was about. So Joshua has Sherman write down everything he needs and then goes to see Abe after 20 years of giving each other the cold shoulder. 20 years. That's just, and, oh, 20 years and comes in with yeah, a, hey, so, I have a list of shit for someone else. Right. Yeah, but the the president secretary said that when the two men met, they like poured their soul out to each other. Um, And then three days later, all of those demands were carried out. Um, Sherman is shocked that this was granted for a civilian and not like the leading general of your fucking army. Right? Like, who the fuck and, is this guy? Like, like who are you, basically? And Joshua tells him, uh, some sources say Joshua tells him their history. I don't know how much he gets into, but he says, quote, the only mistake you made, General, was not asking for more. <laughs> He's like, I know my goddamn it's, worth. I know what I Yeah, can. it's giving a little bit narcissist, but also, yes, she knows her worth. Okay. <laughs> then, of course, we know Lincoln, although, like, he did reestablish contact with Joshua here, um, and they seem to be on pretty good terms. He did not get to like live happily ever after with him as we I'm sure we would like to see like them coming back to each other after all this time. It's very like movie. Yeah. I see them like walking. You know, like, okay. In the Kira Knightley version of Pride and Prejudice, <laughs> when he's walking across the field, his shirt's billowing, you know, like the dramatic walks mm-hmm. through the morning fog. That's how I picture them reuniting. But obviously that's oh my God, that would happen. That'd be beautiful. Well, no, he went through it, went to the White House, but stuff. So that is like that's literally how I've been picturing it. You want but... them to just like grow old together, even if it's just like yeah. we're secret bros and we like hold hands on the porch together, like next to our wives. Yeah. But alas, <laughs> yeah. John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, he the president is tragically shot on the evening of April 14th, 1865 at Ford's Theater by John Wilkes Booth. And he would go on to die the next morning. Um, there are there's some interesting stuff I had here that we talked about last time, but We've discussed, I think we're actually going to save it for October. Um, so last October, if you're new here, we did um, some gay ghosts and fabulous phantom stories. And although none of these stories have anything to do with Lincoln being on Team Lavender, um, there are some like really wild stories of like, you know, some premonitions that Lincoln had and like hauntings at the White House that we decided we're going to add in since it's now officially September 1st. It was not when we first reported this, <laughs> but... Um, we are fully into spooky season, so we're gonna save that, and we'll just we'll add it into like this year's version of the Gay Ghosts and Kevin the Swingtons, and like buckle up, guys, just and hang out till October. Some good stuff, yeah. They're really interesting. My, I will have other stories that have to do with queerness, like these hauntings don't for for Lincoln, um, but it is super interesting. So I'm gonna bring it in with me. Oh yeah, one, but last but, time you also yeah, said that totally like it's it. really hard to find like gay stories but then historically finding gay ghost it stories it's even harder so if if you guys have any yeah. if you have any that you want for it to cover for sure email us because she could use help i think <laughs> yeah i have one that i didn't use last year that i think would be good but yeah it's like i mean like how much of queer history is covered up but then of course you've got like queer history on top of like people not being super just, yeah yeah finally think well we'll come back to that mm-hmm. but yeah let's I guess you kind of see where you guys land on that one. If you think Abe was queer or not, I could totally see how the relationship with Joshua, if we were just looking at the letters, how you could be like, those are just two guys that did not want to get married, Mm -hmm. you know, but given their history before, things that had been said about them before, um, things that they said about each other later on, and then Abe's other relationships. Yeah, you're going to go ahead and say that David and Erickson and him weren't gay. They weren't in a relationship. Like, (laughs) sorry. 
like I will take I that maybe him. Abe wasn't like a homosexual, but no, he was queer. He was somewhere on that rainbow. Yeah. We, he he was somewhere there, waving them colors, smelling like mm-hmm. lavender. And I and I love that Joshua was like, your only mistake was not asking for more because he was like, girlfriends, I can get you the world. What do you need? I got it. That's yeah. fantastic. Happy birthday, Mr. President. That's <laughs> <laughs> gross. If y'all want to see our other episodes or um, the shop Danny made or our TikTok or Instagram, we always like post stuff with the episodes. And last time around, there was like a lot more images that I referenced during the episode. So those have all been posted. If you want to go check those out, that was the Don't Ask, Don't Tell, Love and More episode. But you can find all of it at thegaycousinclub.com. Everything's kind of a nice one little spot there. So follow us, like us, do like us. We just want to be liked. Um, give us reviews. And then give us review. Leave us a review. Give us reviews if they're nice. If they're not nice, um, write it in your journal and then don't share it with anyone. <laughs> Burn it. Burn it. Send it out into the ether and let it go. Yes. Sage it. Yes. <laughs> don't, we don't want no, that. Don't sage it. it. Don't sage it. That's cultural appropriation. I've never saged anything, but when I talk about saging things, I always say ethically sage it and I did it this time. Check out our shop. We got some cool skeleton shit on there. And you know when skeletons are awesome? All the time. But also during spooky season. So you you need some Halloween gear? We fucking got you. We fucking got you. Um, but also if you don't want to buy our shit, that's fine. But at least tell people about our podcast and listen. I'm I'm good at doing that cheesy bullshit. And the entire time, Brittany's just like rolling her eyes so hard she's going to get a concussion. She's like, this is fucking bullshit. I hate this part. I didn't roll my eyes that time. You you were very carefully looking around the room. It doesn't count if my whole head moves. (laughs) Exactly. Okay. Well, Britt, take us out. Um, Meeting uh, (laughs) adjourned. Love you. Love you. Bye. Last time I was like, bye, I love you. Hey, West Side, I don't want to end it that way every time, but that's really dark. So I will. Oh, but we could this time. time. <laughs> bye, I love you. Hate myself. Just to take the wheel, run off the cliff. <laughs>